to you by Hawthorne Bank, a proud sponsor of Liberty School District. At Hawthorne Bank, we understand the importance of strong community in a strong school district. We also understand the importance of strong financial future for our school district's families and for our local businesses. Hawthorne Bank, with you every step. And by Jackson Hewitt. For all your tax needs, personal or business, rely on tax professionals at Jackson Hewitt and Liberty, a full service tax preparation professional. Jackson Hewitt. Good morning, guys. Um, you know, it, uh, I was just telling Ryan, it's like we never left. Uh, we're back and I hope that I hope that break was was restful uh, for you. I hope it was enjoyable for you. Um, I was hoping that this press conference would be attended the same way Andy Reid's was yesterday, but I guess maybe I'm not that important yet. So, um, listen, we uh, we had a good break. Uh, our guys got the opportunity to get some rest. Um, we were able to take about eight or nine days, total days off, which is the most that um, our program's ever had, and it's the most that, uh, selfishly, that our staff or any of us have had off in about eight, nine years. So um, it was good for us to be rested, and I hope that, that, that in the long run um, that's going to really pay off for us. We were able to play well at uh, the William Jewell Tournament. Um, I guess the last we would have talked, we would have played Smithville on the 18th. Um, we did not play well that night, got beat by two, um, gave, up, uh, gave up 63 points, and were, were really, really bad defensively that night. Um, had a couple practices, then had the break. And then when we came back, we went over to Jewel and um, played well. Um, played well there. First game was, was sluggish, uh, recovering from break and trying to get back into a rhythm. Um, but then we got a rematch versus Smithville and uh, were able to to win by 19, 47, 28, and then got a rematch versus Park Hill South um, in the championship game, the same matchup that we had in our uh, Liberty North Invitational and uh, we're able to win that 44-36. Um, played well, so, you know, in-season tournament-wise, that's the fifth consecutive uh, in-season tournament championship we've played in, uh, which is a huge testament to our guys that they're, they're playing well, getting to those games, and, and now uh, good news being that that's the second consecutive one we've been able to win. Uh, individual honors with it, um, Jake Hansen, uh, Zach Starr were named to the all-tournament team, and Brinkley Jolly was named the MVP of our division. Uh, so we had three players represented, and as I told the team in the locker room, um, I think if awards were given out in a way that, that, that was most indicative of the tournament, I think we had a couple guys that could have won the Hustle Award, um, and I think our team represented you know, our, our program and, and our school very well that, that week. So um, it was good for us, you know, so we, uh, you know, after starting, after starting 0-2, um, we've been able to win, you know, eight of our last nine and, and have an opportunity tonight to play Park Hill, um, who is coached by a good friend of mine, uh, Dave Garrison, who I think is a fine, fine coach. And uh, he'll have his guys ready. They've had about two, three weeks to prepare for us, and uh, I know they'll be ready. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to you all and open it up for questions. What was it like playing Smithville that second time around? Like, what was the attitude the guys had after having a tough loss? Well, you know, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that, that there was extra motivation for it um, because clearly, you know, we were on a, a decent stretch and then, and then just kind of stunk that night. So I think that, you know, in life you don't get a lot of time to do do-overs. <laughs> and we got a chance to do a do-over against them. And, um, you know, as a staff, we tried to prepare the guys like it was any other game, not to, you know, I don't think that's right or fair if you if you are preparing a team and then prepare them different for a game because then they're going to sense something's different and they might be a little tense or they might be a little loose. So we tried to prepare as our normal preparation would dictate. Um, but the guys were the guys were pretty locked in. They were pretty focused. They wanted, uh, you know, if you want to use the word revenge, sure. But but um, they were pretty focused. They really wanted that game. And uh, you know, as far as total games go, uh, that might be as complete of a game as we had played up to that point in the year. Um, we we're really good defensively, pretty sound offensively, and just uh, you know, we executed some stuff late, some situational stuff, and then in the second half went on a. I think the reporter told me after the game something like a 20-2 to run in the third and the fourth quarter, which is 
which will help you win some games if you do that. How big was it for your team's confidence level to beat Park Hill South again? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question because it's the reverse of what Ryan just asked, where, where Smithville is a team that beat us. So, you know, so from the outside, you could say, well, then we've got the motivation to want to get revenge or beat them. And then, and then on the flip, Park Hill South is a team who we have great, great respect for. We know how good they are um, and we beat them. So then if I'm using that logic, then the logic would be true for Park Hill South and they would be just as excited for revenge against us. And I know this sounds sounds silly, but but it's the same answer almost. It, it, we tried to prepare in a way that it was like any other game. We used it to our advantage that we had played them and and beat them before. Like we told the guys, you don't get any points on the scoreboard because you beat them before. You know the score doesn't start six nothing because you won. Um, but you know we knew some of their tendencies. We knew some of the things that they did, and so we were able to use that as a point of reference at come game time. So we were able to say. Do you remember what 14 does on ball screens? Do you remember how 23 plays in the post? Do you remember 55 is a left-handed driver? 20 is a standstill shooter. We got to put them in drive. Do you remember they're not very deep? And, and, and so the point of reference was easier for our guys to be able to draw from. Um, but don't kid yourself. I mean, you know, they, they had a quote in the paper, and it's exactly the truth is, you know, that when they saw the brackets, that's the matchup they were hoping for. So I think it speaks well to our guys. I think it speaks very well to them that, that they prepared in a way that allowed them to have success and then to go out. I mean, the place was just, I don't know how many of you were there, but I mean, the place was just awesome. You know, it was standing room only. Um, it was it was a great atmosphere for our guys to play in. Um, and, and we were glad that we were able to, to take care of business against them. Now that the season has kind of been full swing, up until now, how have you seen improvements since day one? Well, uh, you know, I, I've seen improvements in, in almost every area. Now, now not the, the amount of improvement that we're satisfied with. So, so um, there's still a lot of room for us to grow in a lot of different areas. But I think the thing that I'm most pleased with is we have 13 guys on our varsity. We have nine guys on our JV varsity who who are really getting better. I can point to all 22 guys individually being a better player in some area. I can point to our team growing, or JV, JV and varsity growing. So the biggest improvement that I've seen is that our work consistent. So, so I know what I'm going to get from our guys. I know what our team's going to be like, and I don't have to spend a lot of time. Our staff doesn't have to spend a lot of time coaching effort. And so when we don't have to coach effort, you can coach skill and situation and different things. Um, so the biggest improvement I've seen is our seniors and our guys that are returning in the program have done a good job teaching our newer guys and then you know, kind of refreshing themselves on the need to be consistent and be a steady, you know, dutiful worker to be able to be a, a solid team. Um, and then what that allows too is is it doesn't allow us time to worry about some of the weaknesses or some of the things we know they're there. We know we have weaknesses. We know we're not as good in some areas. But but what what it allows us to do is is you know it's the old saying we want to fortify our strengths and that, and instead of worrying about our weaknesses. And and we've been able to to develop some strengths over the past couple of years and certainly this year that we're looking to build on. Kind of based on that, uh, being that you guys have nine seniors. You think next year's team will be as ready to compete as, as high a level as this year's team is? Ryan, that's a great question. Um, because as a coach, you're always you're always thinking, you're always preparing, you're always. So your question being, you know, is next year's team going to be as as ready to compete? Um, I would tell you, I think next year's team would be more ready to compete because um, that's not a slight at these guys. These guys are phenomenal. But I think it's the bar that 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 those seniors have set that the guys who maybe don't have the opportunity to play right now see and they see we want to maintain it but as competitors we want to even exceed it and so i think next year's group as a, we've got a group of guys that will return and then we've got a good group of guys that are coming and what they're going to see is we don't want we want to be the guys that can maintain that level that expectation of success we want to be those guys that can can even grow it and there aren't as many guys who have played on the floor. 
So I think that group's going to be more ready. Now, as far as how much success or how good or how impactful, I don't know. But I know that the attention um, and the focus is just going to be going to be terrific with that group because we're going to have a lot of hungry guys and the mix of, of, of hungry guys and guys who haven't played before and guys that are in the spot now um, is, is a good mix. And it's similar to what we had this year. Um, so I think I would probably have answered, you know, answered the question in a way that says we're ready to go next year. Um, but at the same time, uh, these seniors have just done so much and making a level that's, that's just so hard to match. I mean, our there's a level of responsibility for the guys that are coming because of what this group has done. And, and my hope is that in a couple of weeks, in a couple of months, that that level is only going to increase and be even harder for people to match because of what the group does. Um, talk about Park Hill a little bit tonight. When you guys have done the for them? Yeah, Park Hill. You know, they they're struggling a little bit record-wise, but but that's not indicative of how hard they play. Uh, they don't let results, or they don't let um, you know some bad luck really get in their way. Um, Coach Hill's done a good job on the scout. He's got a very detailed report ready for our guys. Um, we spent some time the past couple days looking at them, walking through some stuff on the floor, how we're going to defend certain actions that they run, talking about their personnel tendencies. Guys are right-handed, left-handed, shooter, driver, uh, aggressive, non-aggressive, passer, rebounder, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we've shared a lot of video with our guys on it, so they've had some time to, to, to study individually. Um, but you know, it's a team whose whose record does not indicate their level of ability or their want to, as as people. So I mean, they are, uh, you know, Blue Spring South is is in my opinion, and Lee Summit West, probably two of the best teams, if not the best teams in the city. And Park Hill is is within a couple of possessions of South a couple of weeks ago, going into the fourth quarter. So um, I maybe you can help me, but I think the stat is they've lost of their. Of their eight games that they've lost, they've had a lead or been leading in five of them, four or five of them. So, you know, they're though just as is there two and eight or two and nine, they very well could be five and four or four and five. Uh, um. So now you're gonna have a little bit of a break after this game. So tell me uh, what your guys is next. Tell me what, how you guys are gonna prepare for this testament tournament. So, you know, our schedule's kind of odd because, because you know, we, we have all this time off right around Christmas and New Year. Um, so we've been able to give the guys some time off around there, um, get them a break from school, get them a break from basketball. But then, you know, with the, with the Stessman tournament coming up here at, at Liberty High, um, we will <laughs> we'll be able to really spend some time developing and improving our team in a really intense atmosphere because you know we don't play for for over a week uh, after we play tonight um, luckily our JV guys are going to be able to get some games in because they haven't been able to play um, at, at the jewel tournament so so this way it'll really help them but but we're going to be able to spend a lot of practice time really refining and preparing our team uh, because after the assessment I mean the assessments third Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then we go Tuesday, Friday the rest of the year. So we aren't going to have the, these breaks or this time to prepare. So this is kind of one of the, the staff's last opportunities if we're going to make any major changes or if we're going to really stick some points of emphasis in to be able to really see them in an intense setting on the practice floor. Um, Got to wrap it up. So, listen, thank you guys uh, for coming in. Hope that we'll see you tonight. We're excited uh, that our game will be broadcast on television tonight across the city on KSMO. Um, the Niles Media guys are, as always, just phenomenal to work with. Uh, they'll put together a great production for us that will represent our team and our, and our school well. Um, our guys will play hard. Uh, I know they're excited to play. Um, I hope that, that all of you that are here uh, can either, you know, come out and watch it or, or check it out on TV. And then, uh, you know, as second semester gets going, uh, good luck on your studies. Good luck in your new classes if you've got them. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys here in a week. Okay.